what they use for ELF technology. And oh. that means that the Navy submarines are not, that the ELF waves are used not only just to transmit messages, they're also used to transmit power. So the submarines actually, uh, and this is what the Germans used in their electro U-boats. Always, always the uh, underlying theme of submarines and submarine power. Yeah, it's being like, a clandestine type of uh, piece of equipment to begin with, uh, that, what better thing to power it? Tesla said one of his greatest discoveries at Colorado Springs was the discovery of te terrestrial waves that went from pole to pole. And that was one of the discoveries that he made. So basically this, stealth, this ELF technology uh, would do nothing but like make this wave energy in the Earth accessible. And uh, that, that would be how they would get a 13,000 mile range out of these submarines in World War II. Well, we have up on the screen now um, uh, Tesla's unipolar. 30,000 uh, miles, take it back. 30,000 miles. 30,000. That's a lot. It sure is. Um, his version of the uh, unipolar generator, which, of course, uh, as, as you can see, is very similar to uh, the uh, watt hour meter, uh, suspiciously similar. Uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, and it's funny because w w when I heard you speaking about this uh, once before, uh, and, e and even in your book, I I'm thinking to myself, if, if this were to be true, that somehow they have, they have uh, surreptitiously been using this, this equipment, then I could pick up one of these meters somewhere and... Uh, and the only working components, or, or the, the most rel relative, relevant components, would be uh, the disk and the magnets, and it would all be the same. And the rest of it would just be cosmetic, or possibly uh, a prop, even. Well, that's that's pretty, you know, stretching, uh, you know, stretching credulity to the limit. And I just wanted to see how how far this this idea went. So I went to my. Uh, Scrapyard, <laughs> my uh, local scrapyard, and was able to uh, uh, dredge one of these things up. Steve, can you get this? Um, and as you can see, it's a uh, West, uh, I believe this is Westinghouse, watt hour meter. And it has, you know, a lot of us have been looked at this from time to time in our backyard and wondered what all this, this wonderful dealy bobs are <laughs> uh, up, in the, up in the front here that, that runs all these, these great little dials and things and you know it's just in, endless technology here and I'm thinking to myself well you know maybe uh, it isn't what Mr. Line is talking about because of all this, this wonderful stuff here but if it's true it, this, this all this stuff would be ir irrelevant and I look back here and I found that there were two screws and only two screws holding this to the rest of the apparatus. And when this drops off, what do you have left here is the disc, the aluminum disc, the magnet here, and two electromagnets in the back. And Tesla and that's said all. it was essential the magnets were weak. The, this is a weak magnet right here, a weak permanent magnet right there. The, the reason for the weak magnet is so the magnetic field can be reversed and oscillate as it bounces off the aluminum. Right. So here we have a relatively modern version of this, and it's a Faraday disk or a Tesla disk, uh, more properly termed, running the whole show. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is compare this to an older meter. Well, according to their theory, they're saying that when current passes through the flux, or rather, the flux is is runs counter to the to the electrical uh, flux is created by the electromagnet. The idea is that when the flux passes through the disk, it's supposed to create a th thrust on the disk and turn it a certain direction. And then the metering gadget is supposed to measure the number of times per second or minute or whatever that this thing turns and all these little gears and show you all these little digits to, to, to measure the amount of current that you're using. But the truth of the matter is, is there something here that uh, uh, bears looking at because uh, it's, it's really a generator? Now, uh, what, would, what would be the purpose of them uh, uh, plugging in uh, free energy generators to each, each of our houses? 
it could yeah. increase the amount of power that they're actually uh, being paid for. In other words, they could generate the seed power to make this thing oscillate, and then you would be billed for what the meter says you used, when in fact the meter is generating a lot of the power, <laughs> along with uh, the poles and the and right. the and the plates underneath all the poles. They'll have copper plates under. And you them. feel that the power stations alone wouldn't wouldn't be enough to uh, keep this moving along. Yeah, I think well, the, the power that we get here comes from the Four Corners region. That's you know that's way up in the north. Corner of New Mexico is where that's right. that's coming from, and it just seems to me that there's an awful lot of power to be used there, and I don't know how they're generating that much up there for for sure. all the uses that's going on. I kind of tend to think that uh, that some of that power is coming from Earth source and also from these little generators, which are also extracting that energy from the starlight and our photon starlight? energy. Whatever you want, it's sometimes called starlight. It's called some people use the term zero point energy, but that's an incorrect term. That's a relativist term, and that's the zero point oscillations in the space time continuum, continuum <laughs> type of stuff. Go back you know? to that again. The quantum fabric, or you know, use all these little sure. weird terms, but that's not supposed to be true according to relativist theory because you can never have one half quantum. In other words, they use this all the time. They use this in the neutrino theory, but according to the relativist theory, you can never have a half quantum. Hmm. You've got to have a full quantum because the electron is indivisible. Oh, right, yeah. And that's not true. Um, let's compare the uh, uh, fairly modern uh, watt meter to something, uh, again, we dredged up uh, in our, our little uh, explorations. This thing is called a frequency relay. This is much older. This is uh, circa 1930s, possibly. And as you can see, uh, it has all the relevant components on it. It has the disk, the weak magnet, and the electromagnets, and, and a power resistor up here. But basically, that's it. And this has an inhibitor that causes it to oscillate. So uh, your comments? Yeah, it's it's... It closes the switch. It shows here, it says uh, close left at 61.9 cycles. Close right, they don't even show. But you see two little contacts, one here and one there. When this disc goes here, it closes that one. When it goes here, it closes this one. So it's oscillating back and forth. And I assume that it has something to do with these coils out here. But I don't know what a frequency relay would be, except this 61.9 is almost 62 cycles per second. It, it sounds to me like it, uh, if, the, if the frequency isn't right, it opens or closes the switch here. But it, it also could be vibrating back and forth. Uh, it, it's got a limiter on it and a spring that makes it return to one position. Uh, but it looks like some very mysterious little gadget. Yeah, it's suspicious how, um, how similar that is to uh, a modern-day gadget without all the bells and whistles on the front. Uh, apparently, they weren't uh, too interested in concealing technology as much as Well, according to that, that diagram that you had on there earlier where it showed the unipolar generator, uh, you can see where Tesla shows in the illustration that the positive charges go one way in the magnetic field and the negative charges go around the other way. Uh, it, uh, here, okay, now you can see one set of charges uh, goes this way and the other set goes back this way. I can't see the markings on there but in that magnetic field, because a magnetic field will, will do work on moving charges. And then the current is, you see you have a loop here. Here you've got a thing on the edge to pick up current, and here you've got a return loop near the center. Now, Tesla had a subdivided disk. He said if you subdivided it this way, you could energize the field, and if you subdivided it the other way, you could de-energize the field. 